We've been discussing the solution of multidimensional parabolic partial differential equations. In the previous video, we looked at the first order explicit method and the first order implicit method, and we saw that there were some issues with both. In particular, the first order implicit method did not result in a tridiagonal system of equations. We had five unknowns, so we did not have our preferred tridiagonal system of equations to solve as we progressed from one time step to another. Because of the Thomas algorithm being so efficient, we want to consider how can we adapt our implicit method for numerical stability reasons to develop a scheme that results in tridiagonal equations because they're so efficient to solve using the Thomas algorithm. So that brings us to the ADI method. Remember the ADI method in elliptic equations, alternating direction implicit method, was a technique for taking constant y lines, taking constant x lines, where each of which was just a tridiagonal system to solve for each line. So we're doing a whole bunch of Thomas calls to get the solution for the y-lines and the x-lines. So can we adapt that approach now to a parabolic setting with marching in time? So that leads to the ADI method with time splitting, or more commonly called the fractional step method. So as implied by the term fractional step method, we're going to take each time step and we're going to divide it up into fractional steps. If we have two dimensions, we'll divide it up into two steps. If we have three dimensions, we would divide up into three steps. In the first step, we would solve implicitly for the terms associated with one of the coordinate directions. And in step two, we would solve implicitly for the terms associated with the other coordinate direction. And again, that sounds very similar to the alternating direction implicit method, which is why I prefer the name ADI with time splitting. So here's how it looks for that first step. If we sweep along constant y lines first during that first half step, then the previous time step is n, and we're going to take one half time step forward to n plus a half. So our time step now is delta t over 2. So this is known, and this is unknown. Now remember, for explicit methods, all the spatial derivatives are taken at the previous time step. And for implicit methods, all of the spatial derivatives are taken at the next time level where the solution is unknown. Now we're going to split these derivatives between the two in a very interesting way so that we get a tridiagonal system of equations. So again, this is for constant y lines. So for constant y lines, we're going to take the partial squared u partial y squared term at the previous time level, and the partial squared u partial x squared term at the next half time level. Let me show you in the equation. So we have a second order accurate central difference in time. This is like a Crank-Nicholson approach, so u i j at n plus a half minus uij at n over delta t over 2. Now for the second derivatives with respect to x and y on the left, you'll notice that the partial squared u partial x squared term is all taken at the n plus a half at the new half time level. So that's these three points. So what you'll see is we're only going to have three unknowns rather than five. Three unknowns corresponds to a tridiagonal system of equations. And then the partial squared u partial y squared term will be taken at the previous time level, at the nth time level. So then, when we put all the unknowns on the left and the knowns on the right, we now only have one, two, three unknowns corresponding to these three points, and therefore we have a tridiagonal system of equations we can solve as we normally do using the Thomas algorithm. Then everything else is known and goes on the right. So that would give us the solution at the first half time step between n and n plus 1, so the so-called n plus a half mid-time level. Then for sweeping along lines of constant x, so it's like the alternating direction, now we're doing lines of constant x. Now the x derivative is taken at the n plus a half time level, the previous time level, and the y derivative is taken at the next time level, the n plus first time level. So again, second order accurate central difference in time between n plus a half and n plus one. And then the x derivative is at the n plus a half time level. That's three, these three points. And then the partial squared u partial y squared term is at the n plus first time level. So that's these three points. Once again, unknowns on the left, we only have three. One, two, three. Those are lines of constant x, so vertical lines in the grid. And then everything else is on the right-hand side. Again, tridiagonal problem to solve. Solve that using the Thomas algorithm. So very similar to ADI applied to elliptic equations. 
We have a homage to Thomas Coles to solve the tridiagonal problems for constant y lines and then constant x lines. And then that completes one full time step. But we're doing it in two intermediate steps from n to n plus a half, n plus a half to n plus one to complete the time step. So this is second order accurate in both space and time. So that's good, we're happy with that. It also gives us the tridiagonal problems, which we love because we love the Thomas algorithm. Now in terms of applying boundary conditions, those would have to be applied at the intermediate time levels for that first step, for that first n to n plus a half. This can get a little tedious if the boundary conditions are changing with time. Now if you do a von Neumann stability analysis on this, because we're taking two half time steps for a full step, we need to get the gain for each of those half time steps. So you can think of those as G1 and G2. So it's a double the analysis. So it's a, lot, a lot of it's the same, but still it's double the analysis to get the G1 for the first half time step and the G2, the gain for the second half time step. And then the product of those two gives the G for the entire time step. It turns out to be unconditionally stable for all values of delta T. So this is good. Obviously that's the best case we could hope for. Now when you go to 3D, however, it's only conditionally stable. All three of the S's have to be less than or equal to three halves. Not the sum, but all three of them. Now that's nowhere near as restrictive as the explicit method, but it's still a restriction on the time step that in the 3D case we'd have to be aware of and take that into account. So that's not ideal, but it's okay. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you what I think is the piece de resistance. This is a, it's a factored ADI method, very similar approach in the end, but improves on this fractional step method in ways that I'll talk about in the next video.